Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you 10 very interesting APIs that you can use in your personal projects. So these may be projects that you include in your resume or projects that you include in your portfolio, but essentially the goal is to show you these APIs. I'll be showing you what the API is, basically what type of data it provides, as well as the pricing for this API. Lots of APIs these days are only paid and you sort of maybe pay as you go or you pay for a certain tier or so on. My goal is to mainly provide free APIs or APIs that offer a free tier for some sort of maybe limitation or completely free. We'll discuss it as we go on. Now, before I actually get started, I want to say, why am I making this video? Why are API related projects recommended? So for software engineering resumes, personal projects are extremely important. This is especially true if you have limited work experience, or maybe you're still in college, so you haven't really had any work, maybe one internship, maybe no internships yet. To actually get these internships or get this work when you're first starting out, you have to rack up experience in the form of personal projects, projects that you take initiative to actually create and build. Also, the more co complex these projects are, the better. So when you add APIs, these are actually a solid component of any project. And this will do a lot to enhance your project's complexity and make it a really impressive project that employers will want to look at. This will especially highlight that you have skills that enable you to go ahead, learn new things and be able to use them in your code, which is a skill that essentially any employer really wants in a potential employee. So I will be discussing these APIs. There are 10 APIs. I will be showing them inside different categories. So what are these cool and interesting APIs and what are the categories that I will be discussing them within? So the categories go as follows. The first category that I will follow is number heavy APIs. So these are APIs that you can use to create charts, visualize data. So this is really like mainly numerical data. So a lot of statistics that you can use. This is really good if you're going into data visualization or maybe you're just a front end developer and you like to create uh, pretty apps with very nice charts that you like to style and so on. So we will be discussing those in the first category. The second category is actually APIs for interactive applications. So these are applications that are not just to look at charts or facts, but mainly just to actually perform different interactive actions. So you do a certain action on the app, then something else happens and so on. We'll go, we'll go more into it as I go on. And third, fact-based data APIs. So these are like informative applications where you can look at facts, um, browse different data. And this data is not essentially just numerical. This can be qualitative data, but they are mainly facts. So it's not really interactive. However, please note that these categories are very, very, very loose. So you can change these categories. You can change the application in which you use your API according to your own personal needs, according to the project that you have designed, according to your own um, choices. Right. So this is not a definitive way for you to use these APIs, but it is maybe a common and a highly suggested way. Also, I do want to suggest that all of these APIs that I will be discussing in a moment all provide their own documentation. So here I'm not here to teach you how to use these APIs, but I am sort of guiding you towards these APIs, giving you an idea how to use them within your personal projects. And then you can refer to this documentation for more on how to actually use them. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. What are the number heavy APIs that you can use for data visualization? So the first one is actually the Quick Chart API. So the Quick Chart API is basically an API for generating charts, um, PDFs, and QR codes. So if you look at this promotional photo from their website, you can see that this is the type of charts that you can generate with this API. There are different tiers for this API. The community tier is completely free, so you can use that one. Of course, more complex tiers with more, um, with more features and different things that they provide can get more expensive and are actually paid. But for someone making a personal project, this is actually very good because you can use the community tier for free. Now, the next one is the UK COVID-19 Data API. 
So this is actually provided by the UK government and it contains all this data related to COVID-19. So there are tons of stats about vaccinations, about number of cases and where these cases are located, the demographics related to those cases, um, how are the COVID cases split by gender, by age, by location, and so on. So there is no image here because their website has really no promo image. It is a government website after all, but you can see the link right here. You can feel free to go there and actually check out this data. There are plenty of APIs these days related to COVID-19 because of the situation we're in. So feel free to look at those for your own country. I did suggest the UK because it was like the first one that popped up for me and the one that seemed the most coherent, but feel free to use any COVID-19 related API for yourself. And again, this is for number heavy APIs. So again, you could maybe take this data, it's really just stats, and visualize it in charts and graphs and really sort of provide um, this type of application for users to browse the COVID-19 stats. The price for this is actually free. So it's a great API to get started with and I think it would be a great personal project to have these days. The next one is the CoinMarketCap API. So CoinMarketCap is actually a website or a platform where you can um, where you can check it out for all sorts of cryptocurrency related news and uh, different cryptocurrency charts where you can check out the current price of different cryptocurrencies. You can check out how those prices have been varied. And actually coin market cap grows by the day and I feel like they add new and new features all the time. So it is a great API, I highly recommend it. I hopefully will be doing videos about using this API to create sort of cryptocurrency tracker apps. But yeah, basically that's it. It's an API for all cryptocurrency related data. Again, you can exploit this data to make charts, to visualize this data. Again, this is stats, numbers, and so on. The basic tier is free. Again, there are multiple tiers. The basic one is free, which should be enough for a personal project. So next we go for APIs for interactive applications. So before we were talking about number heavy APIs that you can use for data visualization. Now for interactive applications, you can use the following APIs. The first one is the DocuMenu API. Now you might say this API, how is this really interactive? Well, it really just provides you access to different US restaurant menus. So all these restaurants in the US, you have access to all their menus as well as their menu items. So you can see here in the promotional image, there are 600,000 US restaurant menus with over 40 million individual menu items. So this is actually a great and very large source of data that you can use. The price for free, you can have 500 API, API calls uh, per month. So this isn't necessarily good enough for you to deploy an app that um, enables you to call the API too many times that has many users because you'll actually have to move to the paid tier. But if this is just a personal project that you can showcase um, and put on your portfolio, this is actually more than enough. All right. So yeah, that's another idea for an interactive application. However, let me just highlight how this can be interactive. Because as I said before, you may tell me that this is just information. This is just data. It is qualitative data, so it's not numbers. But how does this really help me in making an interactive application? So you can use this actually to make a, um, a food delivery application. So maybe an application that en enables you to order food from these different menus or a restaurant reservation application where you can reserve a table in any of these 600,000 restaurants. You can exploit it even further by adding some machine learning and making a recommendation system. So most of these, uh, most of today's apps actually do not just rely on showing you the restaurants in your area, but also will, sh will order them according to how re relevant they are to you. So they use machine learning and recommender systems to provide these different rankings for the restaurants. So that is another idea that you can take and run with and make this really complex and interactive application. Now, the next one for an interactive application is the Google Maps API. Now, Google has a wide variety of APIs. I've only mentioned two of these in this slideshow, but however, feel free to go through them and look at other ones, especially looking for ones that maybe uh, better suit your needs. But the Maps API basically provides you access to different Google Maps features. Now, the website does say that it provides um, data related to maps, routes, and places. So these are different features from Google Maps. However, for free, you can only access static maps, 
dynamic maps and local content maps. So you cannot access routes or places, which is, I guess, fine. I mean, of course, if you want the other features, you can have uh, pay for them and use them in your apps. But if you're just doing this for free, here is what you can access. Now, static maps and dynamic maps are pretty straightforward. So they're just, you know, Google Maps on your phone. And local content maps are actually the maps that show you different things in your area. So um, a, a local content map would have all the restaurants, places, hotels, um, cafes, and everything that's in your area, which I believe can be extremely useful for an interactive application. Now, the next one for an interactive application is the following, the Google Docs API. So the Google Docs API enables you access to different Google Docs features. So anything related to word processing, writing documents, um, editing documents, and all these different types of things. This, this one from Google is actually completely free to use. There is tons of documentation. The pros of using a, I want to say, a more famous or a bigger API from a company like Google, so like from a fang level company, is that there is plenty of documentation, plenty of YouTube videos, tutorials, and everything trying to teach you how to use it. So if you really don't know where to start, maybe going that route, going to a Google API would be actually a good idea because there's plenty of resources on the internet. Next up, we have the Twitter API. So the Twitter API provides you access to tweets as well as their metadata. So not just the content of tweets, but who tweeted them, when did they tweet them, from where, if that person has their location enabled, um, the timestamps and so on. You can get the replies and the, the threads and everything else. The price, you get 25K tweets per month for free, which I think is way more than enough for a personal project. You can uh, develop this however you like. You can have a way to save tweets. You can have more machine learning and maybe analyze the sentiment behind tweets. So for example, you can take a bunch of tweets as input and then generate an output letting us know whether the tweets have a positive or a negative sentiment. Is the user who wrote those tweets happy or are they sad? Um, are they trying to express a certain type of emotion? So there is a lot to run with here. With those APIs, those really big APIs, there's a lot that you can do. So I highly recommend that you actually check out the Twitter API, especially that you get 25K tweets per month for free, which is a ton of information to work with. So next, let's talk about fact-based data APIs for inform informative apps. So maybe I should have included this right after the data visualization category because this is sort of the same idea, except in the very first category we, we talked about, it is actually um, quantitative data. So numbers, statistics, and that type of stuff. Here we're talking qualitative data, so text-based information, but at the end of the day, this is just facts. So the first example of this is the Marvel API. So the Marvel API just provides you access to all information about Marvel's vast library of comics. So Marvel comics have thousands of characters, hundreds of storylines. I mean, it could be even more than hundreds. I'm not even sure at this point, but there's a lot to work with. So you can create a sort of wiki application for Marvel fans to check out and maybe have a search bar or different types of things related to this um, wiki of Marvel comics. So again, this is a really like qualitative data type of application. The price, you get one project for free, which is more than enough because this is what you want. This is exactly what you want. Make one project. You don't need to make tons, tons of projects using the Marvel API. One project per account is more than enough. Now the next fact-based or maybe I should call it qualitative data API is the Genius API. So what is it? It's an API that provides data about artists, songs, and lyrics. So Genius is basically this website where you can go on and read different lyrics for songs and information about artists, and different people can add annotations to those lyrics trying to explain them. You have access to all of these annotations and explanations to different song lyrics. The price is completely free. You can take this and run with it. So what can you do with this type of application? Well, you can basically just create an application that you enter a certain artist, and then you can access all their songs and lyrics. Or you can even go f further than that. You can add more machine learning, make a song lyrics generator, um, which is a personal project that I did a while back in my second year of university, where I basically took the song lyrics from um, 
the song lyrics from a certain artist and then I generated a new song similar to what these artists have previously sung about before. I can definitely make a tutorial about this specific project. Alright, so this is really the Genius API. And again, you do not have to go the machine learning route. You can simply make a, a different wiki of artist songs and lyrics. And finally, the very last API that I want to discuss today is the IMDB API. So the IMDB API it provides data about artists, songs, and lyrics. So the price is 100 API. Um, okay, actually, I just realized that I messed up this part, so I kind of copied the same same one from the previous slide. But basically, it's not artists, songs, and lyrics, but it's actually movies, actors, and their sort of filmographies. So you get 100 API calls per day for free, which is, again, more than enough for a personal project. So again, what is it? It provides data about movies, actors, and their filmographies, not artist songs and lyrics. Please do excuse me. But again, this is really what you can uh, use. Again, you can make a sort of wiki or a sort of descriptive, informative application and use it the way you want to. All right, so that's really it for this video. I mean, these are the type of APIs that I do suggest you work with, both as a beginner and an intermediate programmer. These APIs are highly useful for your resume and they show employers that you are willing to go the extra step and make something beyond the basic to-do list applications that they have seen multiple times before. So do let me know in the comments if you have another type of API or another specific API that you recommend for others to look at. This way other people can see it and have more ideas for their personal projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one and bye bye.